Hello guys, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we are going to talk about type of predecessors in Microsoft Project 2013. In our previous video, we have already learned that what are predecessors. Now let's try to understand what are the different type of predecessors. Alright, so if you can see on the slide, these are my different type of predecessors. Starting with the very first one, it says finish to start. The next one is my start to start. Then we have start to finish and we have finish to finish. We will understand about these type of predecessors in our practical approach. So now if I want to make or if I want to set a predecessors for a particular task, I will go to that particular task and I will double click on it. If I double click on that particular task, a window will pop up in front of your screen and out there I can see there are many options that is general, predecessors, resources, advanced, notes and custom field. Now we have to focus on the predecessors. So if you see in the predecessors tab, I see there are some tabs along with it. There, there is ID, task name, type and lag. We are going to focus on the different type of predecessors. So under the task name, I have to select a particular task. So I'll go to the task drop down box and I will select C. So I am what I'm doing. I am creating a predecessors for task D. So C will be the predecessors for task D. Now if I when I select C, if you see on my right hand side, I have the type and the lag. If I go to the type column and if I click on the drop down box, I can see there are different types. There are five different type of predecessors. Finish to start, start to finish, finish to finish, start to finish and none. Now let's focus on the very first one that is finish to start. So I'll click on finish to start and I say hit OK. The moment I hit OK, if you see on the right hand side of my screen, the blue bars. If you see the blue bars, it says that my task D will only begin after the completion of task C. So that's what it says, finish to start. When the task C will finish, the next task that is my task D will start. Similarly, if you focus on the left hand side of my screen, you see the start date for D has automatically changed. It has taken the finish date of C as the start date for D. Now let's try something different. I will go and I'll, I'll double click on the same task. I have the setting with me that is C. I have C and this time under the type I will select it from start to start. I'll click on start to start. I hit OK and now see what are the changes. Now you see there is some changes in my right hand side on the horizontal bars. If you see it says that my task D will begin along with the task C. So if you see there is an arrow connected from the start date for C to start date for D. It says that my task C and my task D will simultaneously start. Also, if I focus on the start date of column D or for task D, it has taken as the start date for column C. Okay. Also, if we focus on the predecessors column that is here, you see there is 3SS. That means it has taken the task ID that is 3 and it has a relation of start to start. That means my task C and my task D will start simultaneously from the same date. Now let's try this third option. So I'll again double click, hover my mouse to the type of predecessors and I'll click on this drop down box and I say finish to finish. I click finish to finish, I hit OK. Now if you see on the right hand side of my screen on the blue bars, it says that my task D will start, start C task, I'm so sorry, task C and task D has a finish to finish relationship. If you see on the left hand side of my screen, it has changed the finish date and the finish date for task C and finish date for task D are same. Moving on to the last type of the predecessors that is start to finish. So I will double click on the task D and hover my mouse to the type of task 
and I'll click on the drop down box and I'll select start to finish. I hit OK. If you focus on the right hand side of my screen, it says that my end date for task D has been pushed back to the start date of task C. Similarly, if you focus on the left hand side of my screen, if you see the start date of task C and the finish date of task D are same. So it has been pushed back. These were the type of predecessors. We have covered the four type of predecessors. Now next to predecessors, there was something called as lag. Now let's understand what is lag. So I'll go to the task C. I will double click on it. A window will pop up. I'll take the task A and I'll go to the lag column and I'll select two days. After selecting two days, I will hit OK. Now if you see on the right hand so side of my screen, you see the start date for call task C has been pushed to Friday. It means it will start after two days after finishing the task A, that is Wednesday. If so, if I add two days after Wednesday, it will start by Friday. So it is the lag. What the predecessor says, it says after finish to start relationship, there is a two days of gap. That's what we have given the lag of two days. It will begin the task C. Similarly, I can also give the task or I can also give the relationship by typing. So I say one that is finish to start relationship plus three days. So it will take the predecessors as one that is my task ID as one and it will take three days of lag. If I hit enter, if I see on the right hand side of my screen, it has taken the lag of three days excluding Saturday and Sunday and it will start the task B after three working days that is my Monday. If I go here and if I double click on this task, it says three days of lag. I hit OK. So with this video, I guess we have covered the type of predecessors and what is lag. Hopefully you like this video. See you until next video.